Ladies and gentlemen, the third major of the year is on the horizon. The U.S. Open, our national championship, returning this upcoming week to Pinehurst number two, which is why we have a pair of gorgeous golf gurus here to help us navigate, to help us make our way through all the odds available in the DK Sportsbook. Jeff Ulrich of DK Network, Kelly Bidlin of VSIN. Good Saturday morning to both of you. I would like to start at the top, please. So if not for being arrested and maybe his caddy missing the third round in the last major, we still could be talking about Scotty Scheffler, a guy going for the calendar Grand Slam. Instead, we are not. So he enters the U.S. Open betting market here at a price of plus 400 on the DK Sportsbook. It's brave. It is brave, Jeff Ulrich, to bet against this man. But what is your move with the world number one at this number? I, mean, I don't know if you have to be brave to bet against Scotty Scheffler at this U.S. Open. He's plus 400. I mean, we're not talking about some straightforward golf course like Valhalla where, yeah, maybe Scheffler absolutely, if the, the Louisville police didn't, you know, just have to make a, a like a ref show of the weekend, yep. may have been shipped that championship. But, I mean, this is the U.S. Open. This is lightning fast greens. These these greens at Pinehurst are just absolutely, they're going to be so nasty. And there's just so much variance involved. I mean, you just look at some of the past U.S. Open winners. We got Matthew Fitzpatrick at 50 to one, Wyndham Clark at like 80 to one, Woodland won at like 50 to one uh, four or five years ago. I mean, th there is variance in this major. And I'm not saying the favorite can't win. John Rahm won as the favorite or one of the co-favorites back in 2021. Um, but, you know, we're talking plus 400, not plus 1,000. It's just too short a number for me to take at this tournament. Um, I actually expect this number might balloon a little bit as we get uh, later in the week next week. But, um, no, I, I'm not really interested in Scheffler here. Not that he can't win, obviously, but definitely going to be looking elsewhere. Uh, those odds are just too short. Yeah, KB, like my only cause for concern here is, well, another run-in with the law, but also on a more serious note, those low odds. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I'll echo what Jeff said. I, I think those will be, it, it's not an outright price I'll be considering. I think the other thing that we've kind of seen shift here a little bit recently is it's Xander Shoffley. I mean, there was always yeah. questions, you know, about this guy consistently winning and what is his win equity on tour, and now he's got a major win in the bag, and that is a big deal, and he has, it's it's pretty hard to argue that he hasn't been the second best golfer on the PGA Tour this year, so I think you got the you got those two guys at the top. Rory definitely belongs up there. And then I think there's always the live questions when we get into majors, right? What are Rom? What are Brooks Kepka going to look like coming in here? At least those two guys. I think you got to think about and consider at a U.S. Open. So as a four to one on Scotty Scheffler, it's a pretty easy pass for me. I think if you are looking to get involved with him, uh, you know maybe you could. Uh, play a first round leader market, something like that. You get a little bit more bang for your buck. We saw him uh, uh, have a hot start this past yeah. week at Memorial. Yeah, and Jeff, going off of what Kelly just said there, uh, talking about Xander, I mean, heck, his dad has already predicted he will win another major this year, but he is coming off his first major win. It does feel like he's playing the most consistently great golf of anyone not named Scotty Scheffler. This could be a potential floodgates our open situation here, Jeff. How much does Xander have your attention? Who else has your attention towards the top of the odds boards? Yeah, I mean, look, Xander's best, you know, major prior to the PGA Championship was really, I mean, it was the U.S. Open. It was pretty close. I mean, he had some really good PGA Championship results, but you could argue that maybe this is even a better spot. And I think, you know, what, when you look at U.S. Open setups, I mean, Xander not having necessarily high rough to deal with at Pinehurst, you know, he's not quite as long off the tee as some of the other guys. He's certainly quite long. He's an extremely good driver of the ball, but it doesn't have the distance or the strength necessarily of, of like Bryson or Brooks. So um, the Pinehurst setup may be advantageous, but um, I, I would probably look a little bit further back here. I mean, I, Shoffley's great, and certainly you can think about him for the Open, but uh, I think Victor Hovland, yeah. skill-wise, skill-wise, I mean, Victor Hovland, still to me, I, I would still put him above Xander Shoffley. Um the, the swing change he made mid-season has just obviously been so crucial to what he he was able to do at the PGA Championship. He's had a couple more weeks to get that locked in. I really like this setup at Pinehurst. There's not going to be a ton of tight lies um, around the greens. You know, Marg Keimer came here in 2014, basically putted his way around the greens to just like a dominant win. 
Um, Hovland's played well on some of these tricky golf courses as well. You know, he's got a good record at, at TPC Sawgrass, a couple places like that. We've seen him take on the big names when he's been locked in. So I, I, I'm a little bit more interested in Hovland who's sitting at plus 1,600, but certainly Shockley, uh, you can't write him off in majors anymore. Absolutely not, just like Kelly mentioned. I think John Rahm at plus 1,400 is the other guy I'm going to take a big look at. We'll see how he finishes in Houston. But um, Hovland, to me, is really the guy further back that I want to take a look at um, you know, after kind of uh, Scheffler and, and Shoffley. Yeah, uh, so you just mentioned John Rom Kelly. You've already mentioned uh, Bryson. You mentioned Brooks in there. Kelly, who, which live guy do you like the most? Yeah, I, I think it would be Rom for me as well. I, I bet him at the Masters. That didn't, uh, you know, it didn't work out too well. But I think it's, for this right now, I what we've kind of seen in the betting markets too is these live guys not, get as many bets on them. So it would be, my advice would be, don't go to run bet, run and bet Rom or Brooks or any of these guys now. Let Wait and let those odds drift a little bit, uh, you know, as we get into tournament into tournament week and closer to the start of the tournament. Um, that's probably how I'd be, I'll be approaching it. There was, there's just a price point with all these guys, right? They drift out to a certain price where we've seen these guys who have won before that, okay, it all of a sudden becomes a bet. Um, you know, I'd run 20 to one or something like that last time around. And it was that at that number was too long for me to pass up. So when the live guys, that's kind of how I'm approaching, uh, approaching them. I think the other, the other name I want to throw out there that is kind of near the top of the board. I bet him for, I, yeah, I bet him at the Memorial a bit, and I bet him for the U S open at the same time was called Morikawa feels oh, yeah. like he's really heating up at the right time right now. And I think he's going to be rolling in, uh, rolling into the U S open, uh, in form, um, and, and should, should, uh, man, the putting's gotten better. A lot of stuff's coming around with his game right now. I'm feeling really confident in him. Hey, Jeff, when we're uh, talking long shots right now, who is on your card? Who could be? Because you've mentioned the tough U.S. Open setups, which is the case year in, year out. But maybe there are also some guys further down the board who maybe have a good track record on this course. Yeah, there, I mean, there's just so much variance in the U.S. Open setups that, you know, it's, I, th I just think it lends itself to to some more long shot winners than we see at some of the other majors. Like, again, just going through them, like Martin Keimer back in 2014, one here. Um, at 40 to one, he, he was sitting right around 40 to one, 35 to one. But then you had runners up in Eric Compton and, and Ricky Fowler that year who were way bigger in odds than that. So, um, again, I, I think this U.S. Open set up particularly at Biners with the greens, the way they're going to play. I, I think there's there's a lot of sort of, you know, room for for some of these guys to, to sort of pop up. And it doesn't necessarily have to be longer hitters either. Again, remember Eric Compton, very short hitter. Putting's going to be a big deal. Um, I think Tommy Fleetwood sitting around plus 4,000, <laughs> great open player, has shot, you know, sub-64 rounds in the U.S. Open before. Could be his time. Russell Henley is another name. Been great around the green, been great on approach all season. He's not going to be as disadvantaged off the tee at this major. So um, at this U.S. Open, it could be the time for both these guys to potentially play. They're probably better, like, top 10, top 20 bets. But certainly for long shots, uh, I'll take a look at them. And then if you want a real bomb play, Kirk Kitayama plus 15, uh, plus 150. <laughs> um, 150 to 1, excuse me. I mean, certainly Kitayama, it's a long shot. But, um, you know, you're looking that far back. I think he's probably got the best upside in that group. Jeff, your boy Tommy Fleetwood let me down in the final round of your national championship at the Canadian Open a couple weekends ago, buddy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what he does. That's why I said, you know, top 20, top 10, yeah. okay? Yeah, exactly. Uh, KB. And the year before. Yeah, and, and every other and tournament before, on American soil. Do. Yeah. <laughs> KB, what, what, which long shots have your attention? Yeah, I, I don't know how many of these I'll be splashing outright bets on, but I, I Corey Connors, I, I, another Ooh. Canadian, Corey Connors, I think his game rounding into shape a little bit. You're going to find a long bomb number on him and then a guy that I just can't quit because the stats are so good. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, I, I don't know that I for uh. sure will be betting him yet. He does have the back injury that he had to deal with a couple weeks ago. Monitoring that right now, I, I he might be a guy I'll bet closer to the tournament. But man, the the game it just when you're looking at everything stat wise, the game is is just so it, it's so well rounded right now. It's hard to completely ignore him. So those would be two that I'd possibly consider outright bets on. I think for more placement market uh, market bets like Jeff was talking about, um, 
Aaron Rye, Keith Mitchell, these are guys that I'll be looking at. Great, great long iron hitters. Keith Mitchell off the tee, uh, been great this year. But for top 20 bets, top top maybe a top 40 mm -hmm. for Aaron Rye, top 20 for Keith Mitchell uh, would be two I'd be attracted to. Keith Mitchell's guy been betting pretty heavily yeah. this year. Um, and then one just for just for you, Emerson. The great Keegan Bradley yeah. is really coming into form off the tee. The ball striking's looking great. Could he sneak into a top 20 or something like that? I think he possibly could. So he's uh, he's one I've got circled right now. All right, guys, uh, really quick. Got about 45 seconds left in the show. Just give me somebody real quick who you like to win this thing. Jeff. Yeah, I, I'll just... I my, my first name has to be Victor Hovland. Okay. I mean, I'm going to have some exposure to him. He's plus 1,600, but I just like the setup uh, and the potential for Hovland coming off that PGA Championship. All right, Kelly. Colin Morikawa. I think he's there on he a heater right now. He keeps it going. All right, gentlemen. You both are fantastic. We'll talk much more golf with both of you. Talking U.S. Open on this show next weekend. We've sweat so much this morning here, folks. We're hitting the cool down. We're going to wrap up the program after this, our final break here on the Saturday morning edition of The Sweat.